Hello everyone, welcome to this week's podcast for the Gaming Rig community. We are the Gaming Rig team from the website www.thegamingrig.co.uk. Our episode tonight is a more relaxed affair as we have a special guest and games developer, Corey Drake, discussing and taking questions on his new project, Ice Escape for iOS and Android. We should be getting into that shortly, but as ever, let's just have a quick introduction to everybody, um, kind of what we've been doing for the week, uh, what games we've been playing really. Um, so just to make a start, if we start from the front of the table, William, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us what you've been playing for the week? Oh, to me already. Uh, hey, I'm uh, William and uh, I do news and I do the odd review. Been doing a couple of video reviews lately and they've been destroying my life. Lately, I've been playing Mountain Blade Warband for the Clash of Kings mod. Um, I was going to play Monaco, but I didn't get the call in time. <laughs> so Ryan's kind of angry about that, I think. Yeah, just just to update people, um, with the current style, uh, Steam sales, TGR has kind of been buying games as bulk uh, for group game nights. So there'll be lots of stuff on uh, Facebook and Twitter that people can get involved in. But we can talk about that a bit later. Um, so, have you, what have you been playing this week then, William? So, Mountain Blade Warband, Natural Selection 2, and what is it? Avernum, Escape from the Pit. It's kind of like um, Baldur's Gate kind of game. Yeah. Kind of like an RPG. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and which one out of all of them would you recommend for somebody to check out? Mountain Blade Warband, definitely. It's like... Before War of the Roses came out, this was like the original... What? they started with and it's just so good and they brought out the mod a clash of kings based on the second season of game of thrones and you can fight as basically anybody you want and i chose to fight with stannis and take king's landing oh nice so they did actually incorporate all the game of thrones within the game yeah like pretty much every character except for joffrey and those kind of characters that wouldn't really be in a massive fight yeah yeah that's true okay cool thank you for that Moving down the table then, Justin, would you like to introduce you? Well, I'm Justin, doing tech reviews and soon to be video reviewer as well. This week, slowly been making my way again through Final Fantasy VII through Steam, as well as dipping into uh, games such as Torchlight 2, Castle Crashes, and War of the Roses Kingmaker. Okay, so that's in the second vote for that one then, uh, for Kingmaker. So, the Final Fantasy VII, how's, how's it looking on Steam? How's it looking on PC? Uh, it's effectively a re-release of the PC uh, that was co-made by IDOS originally, but I'm playing through it now for a uh, 100% completion, hopefully. Nice, nice. Uh, obviously, take you a little while on that one. <laughs> Not half. <laughs> Definitely. So, out of that lot, do you have any recommendations or kind of just check them all out? I would recommend Final Fantasy VII for those of you that haven't played it. Yeah. But that, there may be a bit of bias on my point at that side. <laughs> other, other than that, I'm really enjoying um, War of the Roses at the moment. So go check that out. Cool, cool. And Toby, moving down the line then. Hey, I'm Toby. Uh, do reviews for the site and post a bit of news here and there. Um, I've been playing um, Mario and Luigi mainly. And... Um, I'm still playing Animal Crossing, and <laughs> I've also I've also uh, picked up Donkey Kong 30p on the Wii virtual console. So that's what I've been playing mainly, but actually mainly Mario and Luigi. That's very cool. Um, your Animal Crossing review is actually live on the website, so if you are unsure about whether you to pick it up, guys, do check it up on uh, the, the Gaming Rig website. Um, it's a nice little review. Uh, so any of those recommendations? Um, any of those you recommend? Well, yeah, I'd recommend all of them, but yeah, Mario and Luigi is really nice, fun, fun romp in the series. It's, it's not a not a down point, definitely. It's definitely a standout for me. Cool, cool. All right then. Um, so moving around the table, Corey, if if you're available, has you been yes. playing anything this week? Uh, yeah, I'm actually working quite hard, but on the weekends I uh, played some games with my brother. I've been playing a, a new Super Mario Brothers Wii. I'm a bit late to the game on that, but. Uh, that is a heck of a fun game. <laughs> yeah. We don't get very far. It's far too tempting to pick up the other characters and throw them into a pit, but it's it's loads of fun. <laughs> that's, that's not a bad little touch there. <laughs> yeah, yesterday we discovered that uh, we could uh, ground pound on a Yoshi and steal the Yoshi from the other players. So 
you spent a good 20 minutes just on the beginning of one level last night. It was <laughs> madness. <laughs> it's hilarious, isn't it, when you get games like that, which you get <laughs> one niggly bit or one you know niche thing, and it's, that's it. You'll just carry on doing something like that for ages. Yeah, I've also I'm also late to the game. I've been playing some Portal lately. Uh, ah, nice. People were telling me for years that I need to play it, so I finally broke down and did. And uh, I love it. It's great. Great puzzles. Uh, great humor. Loads of fun. Yeah. Very funny game. Have you Have you going to be checking on Portal Two then once you're done with that one? Oh, certainly. Yeah. Good. Good. Very good. Very good. Uh, Script Ryan and very funny in that. So. I got so annoyed at Portal games. Why? Because I'm so stupid and I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the part and parcel. It's a puzzle game. Why would you I play sat, a puzzle game? Thinking I sat for an hour in like one of the levels, just sitting there, like, how the hell do you get across here? And I kept falling in so many times. Now I give up on it. <laughs> Did you ever play Limbo? Uh, no. no, I've never played them. If you like puzzle okay. games, I don't either. If you like puzzle games and and you don't get too stressed out with them, William, Limbo is a definite recommendation. That one will get your brain going, and the style uh, and style art to it is really good as well. So I definitely recommend that game. Okay. Cool. Some light-hearted ones for the weekend, then, by the sounds of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Finishing off with me, I guess, then. Uh, thanks for all your comments, and I guess and starting off the bat. My name's Alan, uh, your host of the evening, and also the co-founder of The Gaming Rig. Uh, we're an independent gaming blog and review site, so if you're a first-time listener, then please come and check us out. Or turn to if you're a current fan, we thank you for all your dedication. Um, myself, personally, I've been hooked on the Steam sales for the last two weeks. My wallet's still crying. I'm so glad <laughs> it finished today, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not sure. I thought, I, you know, I might end up in the bank account in debt for one. I did partake in buying quite a few collections. I've got quite a few more games on Steam now. Uh, particularly impressed with the whole Tomb Raider collection, including the new one. So I'm starting with the prequel, and I'm going to make my way through all of them. So that's my current plan, because uh, I do like the whole Tomb Raider franchise. I think it's an amazing series. Um, I've also picked up Borderlands 2 on Steam, um, which I did enjoy as well. So. They're kind of the games I've been playing. Out, out of the ones out of all week, really, I, I still think Borderlands 2 is an amazing game if you've never played it. The uh, humor, I guess, would be quite similar to Portal. Um, I know that there was cohabitation with in terms of writing for both games, so the style and comedy is there for both, really. So I definitely recommend everybody to check that one out. Justin, you enjoy that one as well, don't you? Yep, 215 hours and counting. Nice, impressive, impressive podcasting style Corey you messaged us and uh, would like to discuss um, a game or uh, a project you have so without further ado uh, take the mic all right thank you yeah so uh, I've just been working on a little game uh, for the past six months or so uh, it's called ice escape uh, and it's it's kind of a simple little maze game uh have you have you guys ever played any of the kind of newer pokemon games and you go into an ice cave and you slide until you hit a wall um, yeah. if you guys have played that it's basically that mechanic and there's you know little as you guys saw in the trailer there's little fun little things that happen it's it's a 2d game but in a 3d world kind of a 2.5d puzzle game and you slide around you jump in cannons uh slide down slides fun little uh, just little events that happen. I get what's cool about indie games that I love is I can just throw in, you know, throwbacks to other games. There's a Space Invaders kind of shaped level, um, some Sonic type stuff with the um, the slide that does like a loop. So it's just it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to be free with no ads for um, iOS, Ouya, and Android devices. And you know, it's just something I do in my free time, and I love doing it. So. Just want to release something and see if people like it. Cool. So it's going to be uh, released on the Ouya as well. Yes, I've been. I just bought one a couple of weeks ago, and I have joysticks working and one of the buttons. I'm having a little bit of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say it's going to be released on the Ouya, that it, it, it's it's on its way to the Ouya. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Certainly, I. This is all before, you know, um, approval and everything. It's okay. targeted for that. So there's. I'm working on it, and it's playing on the Ouya. It's actually playing quite nicely. I mean, it's just it's essentially an Android device. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's all looking well, and if everything gets approved, uh, my biggest obstacle is going to be getting it approved for iOS. Their, um, their kind of qualifications are higher, and that's going to be a bit more difficult. But I'm, I'm confident. I'm looking for a mid-December release for it. 
Oh, okay, that's 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 pretty cool. I mean, is there is there like um anything you want to say in terms of um selling it to obviously to, to the fans? I mean, what, what what do you believe that the selling factor is there? Oh uh, well, it's at its heart, it's a puzzle game. Uh, you know, it was one of my favorite mechanics in Pokemon was these levels, and there's certainly not enough of them. There's a mechanic similar to this in Skylanders too, mm -hmm. um, or as well that I've been playing, and. You know, I just decided. You know, it's a it's a relatively simple thing to program. It's not you know the next Halo or even like next Angry Birds or anything. You know, it's not it's not a complex game by any means. But it's just something uh, for my first game that I felt that I could do and make a fun little puzzle game out of it. And it's actually turned into more than I expected it to be. Uh, I've got a I've got seventy levels done out of a hundred, um, and. You know, I'm not really going to be making any money off of it. Like, like I said, it's not going to be ads. Um, it's not going to be paid in any way. It's totally free. Um, I am probably going to be selling some merchandise. I have a 3D printer, so I'm gonna. Uh, I've been printing just I've, on my desk right in front of me. I've just got dozens and dozens of these toys of the characters, and that's just loads of fun to do. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be selling those T-shirts, things like that. That sounds pretty cool. So, are you hoping for like the characters to take off in its own like kind of? distinct way and then obviously you know some of those toys yeah i think uh some of the characters have some cool features to them like uh i have a stegosaurus that's made out of steak so he's the stegosaurus <laughs> uh <laughs> i've got the, the mammoth has a mohawk and he's kind of like green and pink like punkish he's mohawk mammoth um and then there's like a plesiosaur with a shell and a triceratops that blows fire so they've all got kind of weird quirky things about them uh, and each one of those affects gameplay mechanics as well. For instance, the uh, triceratops, you have to use the triceratops to melt a uh, snowman and to push boulders, you have to use the mammoth. The plesiosaur is the only one that can swim. So each one has different powers that you have to work together with them to solve the different puzzles. And some of them, some of the levels are getting pretty hard. Like, I, I forget how to solve some of them, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so, it's, so you wouldn't recommend it to William? <laughs> <laughs> the difficulty level progresses. It goes from very easy to shit, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> you know. Uh, so I'm doing lots of game testing with other people, you know, because I can't just test it myself. I, I have to you know, see how other people are, you know, if I think something's easy, somebody else might find it hard and vice versa. So I've been doing a lot of testing. It's working great on Android phones so far. In fact, every Android phone is working great. Uh, some of the tablets that I've tried it on are bleh, but every phone, it just, it's super smooth and great. I'm really excited about that. That's cool. That's cool. So what was like your inspiration for it? Was it the culture of like Angry Birds? Because obviously games folks um, must look at how simple well, something could be to take off like that. Yeah, as, as far as the level progression, it kind of follows the same as many mobile games, such as Angry Birds, Cut the Rope. Um, those are the only two examples that come to my head, but there's plenty of others. It's a three-star system. Mm -hmm. um, and But really what inspired me as far as graphics was uh, the old Banjo-Kazooie for Nintendo 64. Yeah. Uh, that was one of my favorite games growing up, and I wanted, you know, they've all got like big... You know, the big eyes. Everything has eyes in the game. Yeah. Um, and, and also Skylanders. I... I've been playing through that, and it's actually—I mean, it's—it's it's a younger audience game, but it's—it's it's really cool to put the toys on there and have them appear. It's a lot of fun. So that's yeah, well, it's the thing—if you make a universal game, usually it can be played by everybody. It might look like a, a kiddie style, but there's no saying kiddies will play. You might, you know, it, obviously if it takes off, like you know, good luck to you, and obviously it carries on like that, and you could actually branch out to a different type of audience anyway, didn't you? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to reach a somewhat broad audience. Like this game could be played by, you know, really young ages, even like I don't know, maybe eight year olds, uh, all the way up to. I'm also aiming for people my age who might like these little kind of uh, strange creatures, like the Stegosaurus, um, and you know, they're kind of just ironic little characters that I think. I'm just trying to, you know, male and female, all kinds of ages. I'm aiming for. So that's a broad audience, but I'm confident that. Hopefully it'll be well received. We'll see. It does. I mean, it's it's a great sounding good, and the fact that you've made something uh, something fun you've enjoyed, and you just want everybody to have fun with it. That's 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 my nice charge. Like oh yeah. Of, and when they do, you know, do develop and things like that, sometimes they they make it for the wrong reasons. So. Yeah, it's really fun to watch people. 
test it because some of them they don't really care but others get really into it and they don't want me to tell them how to solve the level and that's really when i really get happy about what i've done and be like oh okay this person's you know not addicted but you know they're engaged in it and want to solve the level and you know that's the best compliment that i can get when somebody's playing my game yeah definitely definitely okay well i've asked three questions um is anybody on, on the table wanting to ask something got you into the development in the first place i mean the games industry itself has never been an easy one to get into so to speak but what, yeah, what generally gave you the favor to start doing it that's actually an interesting story i uh, currently i work as a uh, character td i create rigs for characters at a uh, game studio here in california and i had actually never worked in games before i uh, i've worked in film for the last three years or for the three years previous to that. Um, and I didn't actually have any rigs that I could show in a game. You know, it was all film rigs and stuff. So what I did was I picked up Unity. Unity is a great engine. Um, it's somewhat drag and drop. You certainly still have to code, but it's, it's a very, as far as game engines go, I'd say it's extremely simple for the power that it has. And so I picked that up and I actually built a small little platformer so that I could show my rigs in a game for the interview for the job that I now have. And then I fell in love with Unity from there. And now I'm making this, you know, full. But th that other game was a very poorly coded. It was just a demo. Uh, but I learned what I needed to to get, you know, just a simple platformer going. And then I just fell in love with it and decided to make a full game. Yeah, I mean, I, I work in the industry myself. So it's a bit, um, I, I get to occasionally speak with developers. And from what from what I can gather, it if if someone's got the passion in something, they're quite happy to take the time, go through it properly, make just make sure everything's the best it can be, rather than just trying to rush it out for a quick buck. Oh and, yeah. Uh, if I can kind of point people to do check out the gameplay uh, or the video that you released this month, I think it is something that quite a lot of people will get into. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. No, I agree. I mean, we will put links in and we'll put a little thing on our website if you want to as well, just advertising it all and everything. So, yeah, that would uh, be great. So try and help you a of because it does look like a little fun game, which is what, what you use essence built, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. that, that's a very good question, Justin. Uh, William? I'm just wondering how you make the levels because I always look at puzzle games and I'm like, how the hell do they come up with these mind boggling <laughs> things? <laughs> Yeah, I have. It's uh, in some ways it's really fun, and in some ways it's really frustrating. Um, like I said, Unity has a drag and drop interface, and that's primarily how I build the levels. Sometimes I have an idea going into it. For instance, you know, there's like a Christmas tree level that I made that's shaped like a Christmas tree. There's certain you know kind of gimmicky levels that I have, but as far as the main bulk of the levels that you know are just kind of like a rectangle or weird shape, I kind of just start. I make just a little oh, outlining shape, you know, maybe, maybe it's an oval, maybe it's rectangle, whatever. And then I just, uh, I place the character somewhere that I think it might be interesting. And then I kind of work backwards. I place, you know, there's a, there's a golden bone that you have to grab and take that to the portal. So I actually place the bone first and then the portal. And then I start adding in those blocks. It, you saw the video, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's these blocks that, you know, you, ru you run into. I kind of start placing the blocks backwards and kind of figuring out, oh, okay, if I want to get there, I need to put a block here to be able to do that. But then it comes to a problem is, oh, is that too easy? Or, oh, does that screw up this other path? Or does it make it so there's other ways to go around? And then I have to try to find the least amount of moves because that's one of the stars of the three-star system is doing it in the least amount of moves possible. Uh, but yeah, I was wondering. That was most like unfortunately. Unfortunately, the more I play it, I keep finding, oh, I can just go this way and do it in five moves less. I screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's going to take some extensive testing before um, I release it just to make sure that I found every possible situation where I might be able to fool what I had originally planned. Nice. So it's trying to trick yourself as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Especially why Sleep I need on it and then go back to it the next morning. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> Yeah, so it's it can be tough to test it because I know the answer that I put in there, but trying to solve it a different way, and so so yeah, it can be tough sometimes. 
<laughs> so with that like level you are happy with how long did that take from like start to end well uh some coach? some of them just kind of worked and i was like that's it that's great others i've changed three or four times not been happy with them just because you know i something and it's hard to judge what might be hard for somebody you know because i go into it thinking oh if you put this there and that then do that but as I've been testing, I notice a lot of people don't necessarily see that and they go a different route. Sometimes it takes them more moves than I intended or sometimes it takes them uh, less. But that's the difficult part is, you know, I try to plan something and I, I might plan something cool like, oh, you put this boulder here in a clever way and then you can get there. But then somebody else finds a way to not even use the boulder at all. And it's like, <laughs> ah, my clever idea is down the drain. You know? <laughs> So it can take anywhere between 30 minutes to a few hours for a level, especially if I keep changing it and stuff. Um, so th I guess that would be my answer to how long it takes. It's a wide range. Yeah, they get to be ten yeah, it depends on what's each level. And if you've got a hundred of them, those times add up, definitely. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> it certainly has been a lot of hours. Um, yeah, I, I've actually, I actually keep a log of how many hours because, you know, part of this part of me doing this game is also an experiment to see like if somebody wanted me to make a game for them you know kind of like freelance work how much should i charge i i wouldn't be able to know off the top of my head uh but i everything i do whether it's vfx or games i uh keep an hourly track so i can kind of gauge okay this is kind of worth this much money if i was getting paid at my normal rates kind of thing mm -hmm. so uh yeah i've certainly been watching my hours on this and I'm not going to say how long I've worked on it, but uh, it's it's surprising how many hours I've put into it. It's. It, I think it, it goes back like, to what uh, Justin said: is that you, if you're doing something for yourself, you are more passionate about it, and those hours well, just feel like minutes, I suppose. Well, I I don't work. You know, whether I'm at my real full time job or I'm here working at on my freelance game, this is what I love to do. It's yeah. you know, it's really. It, what I get paid for at work is to, for the hassle of driving to the office, you know, it's like, and then I get there and I'm just, you know, doing what I love. Uh, so it's really, it's really a lot of fun doing what I do. That's very cool. Very cool. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Any questions? I have a question about publishers. Okay. Yeah. I'm wondering, like everyone has their favorite publisher. Like a lot of people who don't realize who publishes like Call of Duty would love Activision because they love the games. I'm wondering what kind of publisher you would like to work with out of all the many that there are. Uh, hmm. You know, I really don't have a good answer for that because, you know, I've only been in the games industry for uh, just over a year now. Uh, so I, I don't have a lot of information as far as the internal workings of, you know, different publishers. I'd certainly love to work on a Star Wars game. That would be, you know, I, I've got an Imperial tattoo You're already on my in Williams shoulder. Good books. You know? <laughs> uh, I yeah, I'm need a huge that. Star Wars fan. Um, so, so maybe, you know, let's see, Lucas, uh, oh. Lucas Arts is now owned by Disney. So uh, I, I guess the like publisher EA. would still be, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I hear terrible things about EA, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I might, I might be willing to put up with some of those. There's a lot of scary stories about EA, like, uh, you know, harsh layoffs and things like that. Uh, so that kind of scares me about working for for them in particular. But, you know, to work on a Star Wars game, I'd certainly take that risk. Very cool. Is there anything you'd really like to get involved with that? Is it like the caravan, like character sprites, the level progression? What, what, if you could pick a part of that game. Oh, uh, character TD. Um Basically, what I do as a character TD is half of it is kind of setting up the bones for the characters yeah. and setting up controls for the animators. And then the other half is uh, programming tools for the artists. So if they need some kind of tool that uh, automatically organizes all the scenes and shows you all the scenes and be able to bring them in to do the different skinning and stuff, that's the kind of tools that I write for the artists to be able to use. And Very cool. that's, that's what I would love to do with them. Very cool. Very good questions, William. Any, any, any more? Any, anybody else? Toby, you've been quite quiet. Do you have any questions? Um, mine's about the actual game. Yeah. Um, I noticed in the when I watched the trailer, there's quite a lot of like environmental hazards. I would call them like mm -hmm. things that kind of pop out of the water and those 
the dominoes I saw, they, they look quite cool, where they like fl- went around the edge of the level and then they like made something happen. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, those like environment things, were they like, did you know you were going to put them in there from the outset or was that something that kind of came as an oh. afterthought like after developing it? Uh, well, from the beginning, I knew that I wanted to add these kind of events to it. I didn't necessarily know that I was going to make dominoes, but my I, my idea going into it was, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with 3D software, but like Maya, like the 3D software Maya, you know, I had the idea, oh, instead of trying to script things in Unity to do stuff, I might as well just animate a scene in Maya and, you know, still... The dominoes is a bad example. That's the dominoes are a little bit inefficient because there's a lot of joints uh, for for a mobile game. There's like I don't know, probably sixty joints in that rig to do the dominoes. So that's a bad example of efficiency. But basically, I my idea was to rig these scenes inside of my 3D program and then import those into Unity. And that's what's great about Unity is it's it's so one to one between Maya and I can just take a scene that I animated in Maya and say in the in the case of the dominoes when the character hit the trigger for it play the animation play the camera animation and do all the cool things that it did and then zoom back out to the regular version that took very little scripting in unity because of all the setup that I did oh, in Maya I- yeah so that was kind of my main idea with this game was to integrate it with Maya but then as far as the things that happen I just kind of you know think what do I want to do today and I think oh It'd be cool if there were dominoes falling, and that's a bit about it. Oh, very cool, very cool. Good question, Toby. Anyone? I'm wondering, do you know like a timescale when you'll be releasing the game? Yeah, I may mean for mid December. Awesome, because my girlfriend will love the playlist. <laughs> <laughs> you already got some fans here. Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Oh, she's oh. seen the trailer. She wants it. <laughs> that's great yeah i'm i'm a little bit behind on setting up you know i've got a website for it but it's literally just a picture right now because i've been spending all my time making the game you know there's a facebook page but it's got maybe nine likes on it currently <laughs> so uh, i've got a friend of mine who's going to be helping me out with kind of the pr side of things so hopefully i can start you know having some help kind of gaining fans and engaging with the community and stuff so and well, I'll give we'll, you guys. We'll be sure to help you. I mean, once once we've uh, recorded and put this out, we'll um, put some links in and stuff, and we'll advertise for you where our our pages and things. So. Yeah, that would be excellent. I appreciate that. Well, it it looks like a hard working. It looks quite a fun and hard working game. So we'll be happy to. Definitely. Oh, cool. And any more questions, guys? William, Toby. I can just tell from seeing it though that I'm going to be incredibly frustrated. Because <laughs> um, you said it's kind of like Pokemon, that icy bit. Yeah, I spent hours in them <laughs> alone, wasting d- like double A batteries. I'm so <laughs> bad at puzzles. I don't know why I keep going back to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I think there's something about puzzle games that when it's finally accomplished, you know, it can be frustrating in the middle of the puzzle. But I think the big payoff from a puzzle game is you know the payoff you know winning and hey i accomplished this and you know i think that's what really drives those types of puzzles and that's that's what i really like uh is finishing a puzzle i don't always like it in the middle <laughs> no it's yes yeah, the self of a uh, aspect of achievement isn't it have you, mm-hmm. have you ever achieving. played like flow on the ios flow no i never even heard of that it's like a puzzle game as well i've spent oh so too many hours on that <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's like connected dots kind of, but you have to do it perfectly. Is that perfectly. the one where they've got bridges now as well? Oh, I see. I think, it, yeah, I have bridges now. You have to do yeah. it like perfectly to get like the top rate and it's like, no, nah, no. Nah. You have to huh. fill all the squares to get to the right, yeah, either one. Yeah, that looks difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds actually. I'm, I'm looking at pictures of it. So is your ultimate goal is obviously let's say you've done you've done movies and now concentrating on to like the handheld side of the game. Would you want to go to like a console? Would you want to be more PC? Do you have an idea of like where you'd like to work if you could? Uh, currently I you know, where I work right now is uh it's a mobile online game. <laughs> uh but yeah, currently it's uh for mobile and online. And so I've never done a console game. I mean I guess technically this will be my first console game if I can get it on Ouya. Yeah, very um, true. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I don't really have any preference as to the engine right now. I do feel like um, it would be cool to work on a really high end, you know, really crazy graphics game. Yeah. But at the same time, I love the little cartoony things too. So I'm pretty content wherever I am currently. And it's the indie yeah. feel, isn't it? It's the fact that you can get up, you do your own time, you do your own time with this game, and you know, it's, it's oh, yours, it's your baby, so to speak. So yeah, yeah, it's kind of you know, my day is kind of two different worlds because you know, during my normal job, it's kind of it's a different environment. It's a more corporate, like actual game company. Mm-hmm. Um, not not in a bad way or anything. It's just mm-hmm. it's two different worlds. When I come home, it's like you know, at work there's a whole plan laid out for what we need to do. When I come home, it's kind of like. What do I feel like doing today? Do I feel like rigging? Do I feel like animating, programming, making a level? And that really helps me not get burnt out because I have all these different things that need to be done on the game, but I can choose what I want to do. And it's it's really nice to do that. So it'd be nice. It's have to have the, nice to have that freedom, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And then obviously in December you'll see the you know the roots uh, roots of your lines, so to speak, and you'll be able to see it. You know. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm release. very excited for that. <laughs> Definitely. Um, well, we we did have a staff member that wanted to join us today, but due to his uh, personal reasons, couldn't get in. So his his question was, what sort of games do you enjoy in your spare time? Let's see. Well, I've always been a fan of the Pokemon games. Uh, yeah. Usually, I don't have the patience for RPGs, but mm. you know, Pokemon's kind of a lighter RPG, um, and you know, I love the colorful characters. Um, on the console side of things, I, I'm a big fan of Halo. Um, not necessarily shooters in general, but you know I, I like the story and and the multiplayer is fun too. But you know these days it's kind of ironic because now these days I'm working on games, but that causes me not to have time to play games. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so so I I generally play uh, all the Mario games. Um, you know I I just bought a 3DS finally, so I played <laughs> through Mario 3D Land, um, and that was pretty fun. Uh, so. I, a wide array of games, I'd say, um, from the more hardcore things to the more kid-friendly things. Do you have like your a favorite game like ever? Favorite game ever? Whew. I know you I, said Banjo Kazooie, which is like somewhat inspirations of the title to your to your game. Banjo Kazooie is probably one of my favorite games ever. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so it's it's you know it's partly nostalgia because you know it's a it's a dated game. Obviously, it's not you know amazing graphics you know like and but the gameplay was great um you know this i love the style i love the you know it's just not much of a story but the story is great the music is just amazing the music inspired the music in my game uh i had this great guy named uh uh jesse august phillips little shout out to him or uh phillips uh jesse august jennings sorry and uh, he did an amazing job. And if anybody needs music who's listening to this, look him up. He does great rates and f- insanely fast turnaround times. And I basically gave him some music from Banjo Kazoo, and I said, "I don't know music. Make it like this." <laughs> and I think you did a really excellent job at it. Definitely, I, I think that's the good thing is from the outset, from the trailer, so you can tell it's going to be a fun game. It just it just makes you smile when, when you look at it. So. Um, I'm glad. <laughs> Most you. interesting to play it. Okay. Um, so, is there anything else you'd like to talk about, uh, Corey, about the game? Uh, no, I think I've pretty much had my say about it. And again, it's coming out. Uh, if all goes right, it's coming out mid December. Um, it's the website. I guess you guys will put it on your I website. I will, but you're uh, welcome to promote them. Yeah, that'll be uh, iceescapegame.com. And. Um, Right again, right now at time of recording, it's just a picture. But hopefully, by the time people are uh, listening to this, it it'll have the website up. So, yeah, that's it. Cool. And uh, are you do, do you do you like your fans to follow you on Twitter or Facebook or would you like to? Yeah, uh, if you uh, go ahead and search uh, Ice Escape on Facebook, you should be able to find the face uh, the Facebook page for it. I haven't set up Twitter yet, um, but uh, we, if you go to the website, it'll have you know a link to the Twitter. Facebook, uh, YouTube, all that. So, so yeah. No problem. No problem. Excellent. Thank you for all coming out tonight. As I said, it was more of a relaxed affair and to um, help help uh, promote a great game. I believe that it's going to do really well for itself. Hope you all had fun. Likewise, as I said before, 
uh, this is kind of a fortnightly uh, podcast we do. So if we do have anybody listening um, and like to get involved, uh, promote a, a new game, uh, your freelance writer, anything really you'd like to get involved in, come hit us up at the gaming rig UK at gmail.com. That's the gaming rig UK at gmail.com. As I said, um, we're, we're kind of like an independent site, uh, just trying to build on the foundation, really. So all our fan input is very important to us. Uh, so yeah, just end on. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Excellent. Well, thank you for having me. Cool. All right, then. Take care, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.